Hi guys, we are now in lesson 8-8 eight, eight, and I am looking at page 499. Uh, for, for lesson 8-8, eight, eight, it is called Multiplication as Scaling. So what we're doing in this lesson, um, we've already done just straight multiplication with fractions where we had a fraction like one half times one third, and we know we're just multiplying our numerator straight across, our denominator straight across, and then we're deciding if we have to simplify. Um, the last couple of lessons, remember, we have done mixed numbers, so either one mixed number times a regular fraction or a mixed number times a mixed number, and we either took those mixed numbers and turned them into improper fractions first and then multiplied across, then took care of our simplifying when needed, or in the last lesson, because we had two mixed numbers, we either did both as improper fractions or we did the area model. So we broke each fraction into a whole number and a fraction, whole number and a fraction. We had our four boxes and we knew we had to do four pieces of multiplication in order to get the answer. So for today's lesson, we're really going to be looking at number models and decide without actually doing the multiplication, which one is greater than, which one is less than, which one sometimes they're going to be equal to. So if you look at the Solomon chair on 499, it says without multiplying. So again, we're just looking at these number models. Circle the problem in each set with the greatest product and underline the problem with the least product, so the smallest product. Solve this problem any way you, can, any way you choose. And if you look at the speech bubble on the bottom, it says reasoning. How can you use what you know about multiplying fractions to help you find the problem with the greatest product? So we'll start with the greatest product. So we know they want us to circle them. So in set one, this is what I notice. And again, I'm not actually doing all the multiplication, but there are some things that I can see in the problems. So on this one, remember that multiplication sign and the word of go hand in hand. They can be used interchangeably. So I'm saying, what's a half of two? And half of two, if I say, I have $2, what is half of it if I have to give half to someone else? I know half of two is one. So I know this answer is going to be one, okay? Three thirds of two, now something that I know about three thirds, I know three thirds is equivalent to one whole. So I know these two have the same second factor of two. So if I do this one, three thirds, which is the same as one, times two, I'm going to stay at two. My second factor two is going to stay the same. So this one obviously is going to be larger than this one, which is only going to be half of two, which is one. So then I'm going to go down and look at uh, C in set one. And C is four fourths, so I have another one, times five sixths. Now something that we learned when we were doing just basic multiplication is anytime I multiply with one, just like I did up here, I'm gonna end up with the same number. So if I'm doing one times five sixths, I'm gonna get five sixths. So these two, A and B, are both going to give me a whole number. C is going to give me a fraction because it's one times five sixths, so my answer would be five sixths. So I'm just gonna put my answers here because those were really easy to solve mentally. So even though I'm not working out the actual answers to all of them, they're easy to solve mentally. So this one again was one times two, which gave me two, and a half of two, which gave me one. So I know that my greatest product is going to be B, so I'll circle B, and I know the smallest one is going to be C in set one. Okay, I'm gonna use that same idea when I go into set two, but I notice something different in set two. In set two, all of my second factors are two and a half. So if all the second factors are two and a half, I'm gonna really focus on the first number. So if I look at A, I have three and three fourths times two and a half. So I know because this number is bigger than one, I know that the product to those two factors is going to be bigger than both of those numbers. So that number, the answer, is going to be larger than both of those. On this one, this fraction, three-fourths, 
is less than one. So I know my answer has to be smaller than two and a half. Because remember, when we multiply numbers that are exactly one, it's gonna give me the same number. But if I multiply a fraction smaller, it's gonna give me smaller. So this is gonna be smaller than two and a half, okay? And then on this one, I have four fourths, which I know is a whole, and I'm multiplying it by two and a half, which is going to give me two and a half. So for this set, A is going to be the largest, and then out of these two, this one, C, is going to be exactly two and a half, this one is going to be less, so B is going to be my smallest product, okay? And then for set three, we are going to do the same thing. I have a number that is smaller than one whole times one whole, which is going to give me that same number as my product. I have a number smaller than a whole times a number, which is a mixed number. Because this is smaller than one whole, my answer is going to be less than one and five sixth, and then exactly one whole times five sixths, which means this one is going to be exactly five sixths. So when I look at all of these numbers now, I need to decide which one is going to be the largest and which one is going to be the smallest. So this one's giving me exactly five sixths. For this one, I have, again, three-fourths smaller than one, three-fourths smaller than one, but I'm multiplying by one. So this one's going to give me three-fourths. This one, this fraction is bigger than one, which means it's going to be bigger than that answer. It's going to be smaller than one and five-sixths, but it's going to be larger than that, okay? Because, again, we did times one, which gave me this. This one is going to be times one, but we also have this other part. So when I look at set three, I want you to think which of those three would be the smallest and which would be the largest based on what I just said. Now, those are fairly close. So I'm going to actually work all of those out just so you can see what happens. So we have three fourths times six sixths. Again, I know that's equal to one. So this one, I don't really have to do anything. That's gonna be three fourths. I have four fourths, which again is one, times five sixths. I know that one is going to work out to one times five sixths, which is five sixths. And then my last one is going to be three fourths. Let me just move this over. three-fourths times one and five-sixths. One and five-sixths is six times one-six, which is 11, because I added my five. So I'm doing three-fourths times 11 over six. So I end up with 33. Four times six is 24. So I get one, that was 33 twenty-fourths minus 24, 24 fourths, and I'm left with nine 24 fourths. So, oops, let me get rid of this. My last answer is one and nine 24 fourths. So automatically, I can see that this one that was bigger than one is going to give me the largest answer. So that is my largest. And then out of these two, which one is smaller? Is three fourths smaller or is five sixths smaller? So you might be able to just look at it and say, I know this one's bigger, this one's smaller. But think about common denominators because I know that 24 is gonna be my common denominator. So if I do times six and times four, I have 18 24ths and 20 24ths. So this one is bigger, which means the 3 fourths times 6 sixths was my smallest. 
I can also think about it in terms of if I didn't find the equivalent fractions. When I'm looking at three-fourths of something versus five-sixths, I know that both of them are one away from the whole, but this one, the pieces are bigger. So I'm getting three big pieces and I have one big piece left over. On this one, my pieces are smaller, so that means the leftover piece is also smaller. So the five pieces are going to be bigger than those three pieces. Okay. Um, you see on set three, I just verified with doing the multiplication, even though they told us not to multiply. I just wanted to show you how you can compare. Um, but again, going back, I know that this one is going to be the largest because of that one hole. So I'm multiplying again, times one hole, times one hole, times something bigger than one hole. Okay, if we take a look down now at the look back, the look back question, said, how is three thirds times two like one times two? And really what we just did in that last problem explains how they're the same. So three thirds we know is equivalent to one if I have three parts and it takes three parts to make the whole, three thirds, I know that I have one whole. Um, multiplying it by two, I'm multiplying it by two, so essentially it gives me the same answer. If I wanted to work this out, remember I can do that, two over one. I have three times two is six, three times one is three, and six divided by three is two. If I multiply one times two, I know I also get two. Okay, that was the solvent share for lesson 8-8 on 499 and the look back.